Night of the night here in Birmingham, Steve Bunce. Piers O'Leary about to make his way to the ring for his third defence of the WBC International Super Lightweight title. It's a step up against Belgium's Havanas Martirosian, who is already in the ring. Your commentary team for this one. We say good evening to Darren Fletcher and Richie Woodall after our MC, Thomas Triber. Live on TNT Sports. Let's welcome to the ring the defending champion from Ireland, Pierce Big Bang O'Leary! So here is the unbeaten super lightweight from Dublin, Big Bang to his friends, Pierce O'Leary, all set for the next fight along the road. from the Resorts World Arena in Birmingham, England. It is all being brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Unibet. We get things started with 10 rounds scheduled, and it will be for the WBC International Super Lightweight Championship. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, steward in charge, Matt Harris, along with the World Boxing Council, President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor Miguel De Pablo, Timekeeper Tony Dunkerley. Our three judges assigned will be Brahim A. Adi of Belgium, Lee Every of England, and Ansi Perayoki of Finland. Our referee in charge will be Victor Lachlan of Scotland. <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger fighting tonight out of the red corner. He comes to the ring wearing white with black and weighed in officially at 10 stone. Coming to us from Genk, Limburg, Belgium, he brings an undefeated record with 16 wins. 10 of his 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hova Ness, Hovo Martirosian. And his opponent across the ring, he is the defending champion, fighting tonight out of the blue corner. He comes to the ring wearing green with gold and weighed in officially at nine stone, 13 pounds. Hailing from Dublin, Ireland, he is undefeated with 13 wins. Seven of his 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the reigning and defending WBC International Super Lightweight Champion, Pierce Big Bang O'Leary! Okay, boys, you've had your instructions. Remember, obey my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. God bless. Touch gloves. So good evening everybody, welcome to Birmingham and the start of this magnificent seven card tonight. And we start off with Pierce O'Leary from Dublin on St. Patrick's Day weekend, defending his WBC international title for the third time. Both men in there unbeaten, both prefer the stoppage route. Uh, Marty Rossian is from Belgium, he's 31 years old and was a decent amateur. But the big attraction here, Richie, and good evening by the way, is that both of them can bang. Yeah, both decent punches. I've been impressed with Pierce O'Neary, the way he's gone about things. Um, he, he starts pretty quick, and uh, yeah, he's decent. Five wins inside two rounds, um, O'Leary. 
but he's, he's up against someone who, who was an experienced amateur boxer and Marty Rosian undefeated himself. But I think Marty Rosian will, will look to, to, to actually cover up early on and just watch O'Leary, he's got to watch out for O'Leary's power early on. And they've had 29 fights between them, 17 stoppages. O'Leary's got support in here tonight and at the O'Reilly's Judges Pub on Parnell Street in Dublin. They sponsor him and there's anywhere up to 500 people in there tonight watching it. He's a popular fella. I thought the quote from Frank Warren was perfect when he said that he's like Clark Kent and when he takes the glasses off, he becomes Superman <laughs> because he is a different character yeah. inside and outside the ring, Richie O'Leary. And he'll have a lot of support here as well. A lot of um, Irish in, in Birmingham. Big Irish population here. So they, they will come out to support their man. Like I say, Pierce O'Leary, yeah, looking for the big shots early on. Motor up, Marty Rosian just covering up, taking a look at O'Leary. And just got, I think he's got to just practice and, and just keep that jab going out like that one there and just keep his distance from O'Leary early on. As you can hear, there's already a good noise inside the building, which will build to a crescendo for Nathan Heaney's ring walk. He's top of the bill a little bit later on. Wild swing there from Marty Rossian that just whistled past the ear of O'Leary. One thing Marty Rossian's got to watch out for here, Fletcher, when he throws that jab, he's got to hit the target. If he misses, you watch O'Leary's good head movement, he punches with good counters. So if Marty Rossian misses with his jab, that's when he could get caught. So he's got to watch it early on here, uh, Marty Rossian. Ten rounds, this one. Scheduled four, there's a great left hook from O'Leary. Short, sharp, accurate and quick. And Marty Rossian touches down for the first time. We were just speaking about it, wasn't he? That he's got to watch out early on. He gets caught with a good shot there. Superb left up. He was trying to land the right hand of his own, Marty Rossian, but he got caught, flush with that left up from O'Leary. Cracking shot. O'Leary can finish things early. Five wins inside the first two rounds, and now the man from Belgium certainly knows the power that the Dubliner brings in there. Yeah, he's responded quite well, to be quite honest, Fletch, working behind, back behind his jab but doesn't want to be making those mistakes again. And O'Leary, you see, when you're in at mid-range, he's a powerful man, O'Leary, and that's his game. A decent response, though, from Marty Rossi, who's landed a couple of solid shots of his own since taking the count. Final few seconds here of a first round that Pierce O'Leary has already flexed his muscles and showed his power. Great shot, wasn't it, from him there? Just whips it over the top there. In a, in a short to mid range, a very short sort of punch, if anything, from O'Leary. Let's have a look at it here. So the right hand goes in. There's that little left hook that comes over the top. Flush on the chin. And Martirosi, and he had to, to really think about how he recovered there. And he recovered well behind that jab. It's one all 16 fights. He's had 10 via the stoppage route, but. Pierce O'Leary already has gained the respect of the man that he's in there tonight. Joe McNally in his corner, by the way, you heard him at the end of the round. He's going to be in there with Dennis McCann a little bit later on. So out they come for the second. Scheduled for 10, the WBC International Super Lightweight title on the line, which is being defended by Pierce O'Leary of Dublin. I actually think Mark, Marty Rossian is not bad with his straight shots, Fletch. If he keeps his distance, works with that jab and long straight right hand, he may have some success. It's when he steps into that short and mid range, that's when your money's on O'Leary. Powerful man, punches hard. So Marty Ro Ro Rossian has got to, for me, got to stay at distance. You see, powerful on the inside there, O'Leary. Well, one thing that Martin Rossian doesn't want to do is feel the ropes against his back too often because that's going to give O'Leary the chance to unload. O'Leary's gone the distance in two of his last three fights as he stepped up in class. Ten rounds against Kane Gardner at Wembley Arena in September and ten against Emmanuel Mungangela in 2022. But around those fights, the legs just start to stiffen again as uh, Martin Rossian feels the O'Leary power 
And he's starting to find his range and starting to find his rhythm. And there were just signs in there that he's breaking him down. Yeah, he just got caught with a good left hook there again from O'Leary. But before that, there was a, sh a short chopping right hand. It was just sort of on the temple area of Martirossi, and it was a cracking shot. And that's probably what started um, those little slips and stutters there from Martirossi. But good boxing again, short mid-range power shots from O'Leary. Decent response there from Marty Rossi, but he can't get out of that corner at the moment. And these hooks are causing a lot of damage from O'Leary. They don't travel very far, but they don't need to. There's a lot of power in them. And uh, Marty Rossi already knows exactly what he's up against in there. That's not a bad right, though, from him, yeah, by way of reply. Nice short chopping shot that was from him. But he's sort of playing to O'Leary's tune here because he's coming forward, he's planting his feet. And that's allowing O'Leary to, to get home with the bigger shots. But, but he fancies it himself, that's not bad either from Martirossian. See, that's what he's got to revert to do a little bit better, working with that jab, just measuring that distance and gap before he lets the bigger shots go. Occasionally, you know, you can be a victim of your own success if you think you're going to land big shots all the time. You've got to get back to your boxing and set up those bigger shots. Well, there's the bell to end the second as both men were looking to unload. So welcome back to uh, Birmingham. First fight of the night between Dublin's P.S. O'Leary and Hovannis Marty Rossian from Belgium. And the power to this point, Richie, has been with O'Leary. Yes, it has indeed. But we have seen glimpses from Marty Rossian also. So it's quite an entertaining contest. But the first two rounds for me have gone to O'Leary. 10-8 the first round, and he won that also on 10-9. One thing that might be worth a mention is the fact it took him two goes on the scales Martin Rossi in yesterday to make the 10 stone limit he was nine ounces over when he first tried it they gave him a couple of hours to get the weight off and he was able to in the end but you wonder the longer the contest goes on whether that could be a factor good shot again from O'Leary but straight away tried to whip that Left hooking himself, Marty Rossi, and he's certainly a tough fella, isn't he? Yeah, gambling a little bit there, Marty Rossi, and he's what they call counter-attacking, so he just led with his, his backhand, his right hand, trying to beat O'Leary to the punch as O'Leary's coming forward. You've got to get the timing spot on when you counter-attack, beat your man to it, but he did it, it wasn't too bad there with that right hand. A decent right hook into the body from O'Leary, and mixes up the attacks well, he's not just a headhunter in there, Decent work to the body as well, comes in from the Irishman. And a good approach as well, Flex. There's that double jab, you see. That closes the gap down, that double jab. Then you can switch the attack downstairs with the right hand. So it's it's good boxing from O'Leary. Oh, there's a little cut, you know. Um, O'Leary's right eye, it's just in the corner, it's just... It's just a, a slight, either a graze, but just a bit of blood just coming down. That's a great court, shot yeah. as well, long right hand from Marty Rossian, probably the best punch of the fight for him. And he can see that cut, and it might just be spurring him on. And the shot that he's just landed will give him confidence too. Yeah, it was a good shot, wasn't it? He's had a bit of success here. Just needs a little bit more head movement from O'Leary as he's coming forward. Well, it is exactly the kind of contest that we expected between these two two men that are used to stopping the opposition when they're in there, and both of them went in looking for the knockout tonight. The early success was with O'Leary, but this is the best round of the fight so far for Marty Rossi. Yeah, he's boxing well, working behind his own jab. He's been successful with the odd right hand as well. And he's produced a cut on the right eye of O'Leary. Final 30 seconds of the third. O'Leary's been sparring with Josh Taylor, among others, in the build-up. He's ringside tonight as well. 
Niall Byrne is the cut man for O'Leary, so he's got a bit of work to do here between rounds. Oh, lovely short right up, but that was from O'Leary. What a super punch that was. It just stopped uh, Marty Rossin right in his tracks. That's the uh, Pierce O'Leary corner. Joe McNally in there, a little bit more agitated, a bit more urgent with the instructions that he's given in between rounds as we see the action from the third, Rich. Yeah, a little bit of a... I think that's where the cut came from. So a bit of success. There's that good right hand from Martirossi in there. So, um, yeah, he had some success in that round. Martirossi has been at the I-Box gym. He's worked a bit with Sam Noakes prior to his last fight. And he did impress Alan Smith while he was there, and you can see why he showed a lot of bravery to pick himself up off the canvas in the first round. And the longer the fight's gone on, the better he's become, the more confidence he's shown. Well, I think he's well-schooled, isn't he? He keeps a good guard, and he's a good straight puncher. And his timing seems to be OK also. But I just think he, he takes on O'Leary. Um, that's O'Leary's best game at short and mid-range. That's where my money's on O'Leary. This is where your Irishman will do his better work. A <laughs> really good shot to the body from O'Leary. And then Martin Rossian just seemed to brush himself down as much to say you'll need to do better than that. He's either a really good kidder or his stomach's made of cement. <laughs> yeah, he's obviously a tough nut. Tough nut to crack. Good shot from Martin Rossian yeah, again. Not bad at all. That right hand's his punch, isn't it? In fairness to O'Leary, though, Richie, they bounce off him. Yeah, I mean, well, O'Leary's tough as old boots, isn't he? He's a tough kid. And probably the bigger puncher out of the two. But uh, Marty Rossian's power, yeah, it's, it's decent, isn't it? But this is where he, he's got to get, he's got to move from the ropes there, taking on O'Leary. And that's O'Leary's strength, that short and mid. And when he's backing his man up against the ropes, then... Yeah, just try to sneak the right uppercut through. Yeah. The Marty Rossian corner is just to our right from the commentary position here at ringside, and every bit of success he has is cheered to the rafters by them. They're trying to get as much confidence into their man as they possibly can, and he really is conducting himself well in there. It's a great start to the night, though, isn't it? This fight to this point, a really good card. Top of the bill, Nathan Heaney and Brad Pauls, but this has been a great way to start. Action-packed, isn't it? No messing around with these two. And, yes, the corner... Very excited, sort of reminding those judges as well what success Marty Rossian, Marty Rossian rather, is having. O'Leary up on his toes, moving towards the end of the fourth round. Good shot again coming in from the man from Belgium right at the end of the round. A little flurry from Marty Rossian to end the four. So, welcome back to Birmingham. There's uh, Josh Taylor ringside tonight. Did a bit of work with Pierce O'Leary recently. He's just had to pull out of the rematch with Jack Catterall, but good to see him ringside tonight, Richie. Yes, and obviously good spars, I should imagine, with Pierce O'Leary. You probably paid to watch that, and there's uh, Mr. Heaney. Yeah, Nathan Heaney, top of the bill, British middleweight champion. He's been a very visible presence at ringside tonight because not only does he hand deliver the tickets to all his fans when they arrive at the arena, he pretty much welcomes them to the <laughs> venue as well, doesn't he? Like a greeter, isn't he? <laughs> He's a good man. Yes, indeed. Brad Paul's the opponent tonight. There are rumours of a big fight at the Bet365 Stadium in the open air in the summer if he gets through, so. Plenty on the line, but there's a lot of action between now and then here on TNT Sports tonight. And a fight that looked like it might end early when O'Leary had Marty Rossi on the canvas in the first round has turned into a really good one. Yeah, both looking to land their right hands now. And both having success. I think Marty Rossi again 
with that jab of his. It's a, it's a pain in the backside for O'Leary. Now and again, he just sticks it out. It's in O'Leary's face. But the more he comes forward, Marty Rossi, and the more chance I think O'Leary's got probably of landing that right hand over the top. He's just got to lure, lure him into that position where he can whip one over the top. Slipping the jab, obviously, to the left and just whip the right hand over. But yeah, it's a cracking fight, it yeah, really is. Decent combination there from O'Leary. He's had a lot of success with those little short, sharp hooks. Yeah, that's decent boxing there, just behind the jab. Two, three jabs before he's throwing that right hand again. He's thinking about his work, measuring the distance between himself and his opponent before he, he, he throws the right hand. He's relocated to, to Liverpool these days to work with Joe McNally. Dear O'Leary was living above a pub when he was based in the south, but he's got a house now in Liverpool. He said he's a lot more settled. He can get back to Dublin a lot quicker and his family can come and spend time with him, which is important to him. He's got his work cut out tonight, though, against Havana's Marty Rossian, who to this point, apart from the knockdown in the first, is definitely now giving as good as he gets. Yeah, he's getting his timing together, isn't he, now, Marty Rossian? He's starting to land with some decent shots. That right hand especially. That's a really good yeah, right hand again, Richie, right on cue and right on target. Yeah. Well, Lee again, probably just guilty of just dropping his left hand when he's in a short and mid-range there, and just he's got away with it now and again, but uh, he's just got caught with a couple of good shots here from Marty Rossian, so it's not a bad round for the man from Belgium. Both men in there tonight, putting their unbeaten records on the line. O'Leary's won all 13 with seven stoppages, 16 wins in a row for Marty Rossi, and he stopped 10. And the work rate of, of both of them in there has been very impressive. And O'Leary's trying to walk him down, but he's been met head on with some shots, and as he's going away, He's also getting caught, so he's got to keep those hands a little bit higher as he's moving away, O'Leary. And let's bring in Carl Frampton, who's ringside. It's a good one, this Carl, isn't it, to get us underway here in Birmingham. I think it was a great start from Piers O'Leary, but uh, I think he's just started to neglect his job. He's trying to land that big left hook quite a lot, trying to land an overhand right as well, and he's just forgetting about his job. At the fight level here at the halfway point, and the knockdown has it level. But in terms of rounds, I have Martin Russian winning three to two. Um, I think Pierce O'Leary just needs to relax a little bit more, get back to his boxing, do everything behind the job, and it becomes an easier fight for him. Thank you, Carl. I mean, by Carl's scorecard, Richie, the momentum now is with Havana's Martin Rossian. Yeah, it's close, isn't it? I got it three rounds to two the other way, actually. But uh, yeah, I think there's not a lot in it at all, is there? Let's face it. And Marty Rossian certainly had some success in that last round with that right hand. So we move into the second half of the fight, scheduled for 10. WBC International Super Lightweight title at stake, being defended again tonight by Dublin's Piers O'Leary. Certainly giving Marty Rossian um, some encouragement, hasn't it, Fletch? And there's another good right hand from him. I think it looked in the first couple of rounds as though the O'Leary left hook was going to be the punch, but it seems like the Marty Rossian right is uh, the one that's having the most success at the moment. Yeah, just there, an example of just being a little bit too far out with that left hook. That's why he's got to use that double jab a little bit more and close the gap down with the feet to land that, to land that shot. It's a bent arm punch, remember, the hook. So you have to be in it short and mid-range for it to be most effective. But you've got to get there, and you get there with that double jab, fast feet in, and then you whip that left hand over. And there he continues to plough forward, trying to let his own right hand go there. That was a good shot from O'Leary there, because then the way he just dipped out the way and avoided what was coming back from Marty Rossian. So that was a nice bit of neat boxing there from O'Leary. He's got some support and sponsorship these days from Conor McGregor. T.S. O'Leary, very entertaining fighter as you're seeing tonight. No surprise that it's started off like this when we all sat 
got together and talked about the card tonight. There aren't many that you look at and say that's going to be lopsided. No, Very competitive right. fights, Richie, from top to bottom. Well, on the cards, it's a, a real good night of boxing. It's close, close fights to call. A little bit of it, there's a cut there. Marty Rossi, Rossian's really left good right hand as well, though, Richie. Just as you were talking about the cut, the Belgian lands a, a beauty of a right hand onto the cheek of Pierce O'Leary. Yeah, that's what he needs more of, O'Leary. Just to move in that head a little bit more. Marty Rossian on that front foot, just leaning over and working with his jab, but that's the shot you've got to slip and then get into that position to land that bent arm shot. I think the point you'd make as well with regard to the cut, it's a little nick around the eye of O'Leary and they've got that under control. It's a more significant cut to the eye of Marty Rossian. A few seconds here of the sixth. Another very competitive round. So let's head backstage because we're going to see Ethan James up next against Owen Cooper. And Ethan James is talking to Raven Chapman. So, Ethan, you're on the big stage tonight fighting Owen, who you know well. Are you excited to get out there? Yeah, I'm on a good show. Ready to put in a good performance. I've had a great camp and uh, looking to do the business and get another belt on my shoulders. So you're fighting for the vacant English title tonight. What would it mean to you to win it? Just another prestigious belt to put, add to the collection along with the European and hopefully push on after this, but I've got business to do tonight first. So smash it tonight, good luck. Cheers, thank you. So that's uh, Ethan James, he's unbeaten, so is Owen Cooper, who's up against tonight for the vacant English welterweight title. That comes next. Uh, it's been confirmed as well by Victor Lachlan that it was a punch that caused the coverage. Yeah, and it's a nasty cut, isn't it? Let's have a look here. Oh, it looked like the head, didn't it? Unless, did that cause the cut? It did, did it? But mm. there was quite clearly a signal from Victor Lockley yeah. that it was a punch. Yeah, so we can only go by what he said based on the replays. You might beg to differ, but yeah. that's the way it's closer, been. But yeah. that's, what, that's, that's what he's called. So seventh round, and just to reiterate, it did take Marty Rossi in a couple of visits to the scales yesterday to make the weight. Whether that has an impact later in the fight. We're about to find out potentially, but this has been a good one. It's tight. Uh, Carl Frampton had Marty Rossian slightly ahead. Richie saw it slightly in favour of Pierce O'Leary. And O'Leary just started to try and up the tempo here in the seventh. Started to take the fight to the Belgian again and started to have some success. Yeah, it was the left hook, wasn't it, from O'Leary? Super shot on the inside again. He just caught Marty Rossian there with a, a superb shot. There he was again, just a little bit too far out, but he's getting closer and closer with that punch. But that's what set the jitters off there for Marty Rossian. It was a good shot on the inside left hook. And the blood's already flowing again from the cut above but Marty Rossian's left eye. He catches a right hand on his way out there, the Belgian. This is good work at the start of the seventh from O'Leary, but there's the response again from Marty Rossi. And just when you think it's swinging O'Leary's way, he finds a punch himself to drag himself back in it. Yeah, he recovers very quickly, doesn't he? He's a tough kid, no doubt about it. He's been under a bit of pressure in this round, a couple of good shots from O'Leary. He seems to have recovered again. The eye looks bad, though, Fletch. Yeah, looks running a... down the side of the face of Marty Rossi. An awful lot of damage around the eye of Marty Rossi. It's been a good round to this point for Pierce O'Leary. Good oh. shot, though, from Marty Rossi. <laughs> they felt that one at the back of the hall. Yeah, I think they both uh, landed simultaneous, simultaneously. Oh, there he goes. Just a slip, I think it was. Just a slip. The eye's getting worse. But yes, I think they both landed at the same time, Fletch. Yeah. Marty Rossi landed a good shot, but so did Pierce O'Leary. So, yeah, cracking round this one. Inside the final minute of the seventh, all action in there between O'Leary and Marty Rossian. And neither man's really wanted to take a backward step. Marty Rossian whips a really nice left hand into the body. I think O'Leary's realised he's got to get close to land that left hook. That's his danger shot. But by doing that, then he risks walking onto a right hand. But I genuinely think he's, he's prepared to do that. If he gets close to that left hook, that's the danger shot for O'Leary. 
and he's getting closer. A couple of good ones there. I don't know whether you read into body language or anything, but he did just take a very long, lingering look at his corner, Marty Rossi, and when he was moved away by Victor Lachlan. Well, if weight is an issue, then it's, with this intensity in, in the contest now, then it will start to take its toll. Good round. So there's the right hand there from Marty Rossian. There's that left hook, just on the temple, wasn't it? That's what started it all off. He recovered fairly quickly, but nevertheless, it's a good punch there from O'Leary. And like I said, I think he's probably prepared to take the odd right hand to get close to try and land that punch. And look at the eye, blood coming down the face. It's a bad cut. So three to go, and it's anybody's fight. A lot of damage around the left eye of Marty Rossi and O'Leary's cut as well. Marty Rossi has been down. Both of them have showed tremendous punch resistance in there. Two men in fantastic shape heading into the eighth. And Marty Rossi looking to start this one quickly with that long straight right hand that's been his main punch tonight. Good response from Marty Rossi in there. As we've said from the start, didn't we? He better, seems to be better at longer range. Long straight jab, long straight right hand, and when he gets his timing right, it's a good shot indeed. I think O'Leary knows that, and that's why he knows he's got to get inside to land the, the bent arm shots. On the odd occasion, only he's got to step more, a little bit more to his right, Fletch, away from that right hand. You can't drift mentally and walk onto that shot. That's what Marty Rossian will be hoping for. But it's a cracking contest, it really is. Both landing good, sh good shots here. Both have done themselves proud in there to this point. Fascinating to know how the judges are seeing it. Certainly feel that he's gaining momentum the longer the fight goes on, O'Leary, after that little flurry in the middle rounds from Marty Rossian. See, that's better work from Marty Rossian, but generally he struggled to, to keep O'Leary at distance. O'Leary has closed that gap behind that double jab, and he's landed the better shots on the inside for me overall. Both of them landing again, O'Leary might just have got the better of that exchange. There's a good long right again, though, from Marty Rossian. Yeah, great response, wasn't it, from Marty Rossian. Straight right hand. Just when you think O'Leary's getting the upper hand with them, those bigger shots, then the powers of recovery from Marty Rossian, very impressive indeed. I'll tell you what, Richie, if the rest of the night's as good as this, we'll be satisfied, won't we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cracking fight to start things off, moving towards the end of the eighth. Blood flowing down the cheek of Havanis Marty Rossian, but it's not slowing him down, it's not breaking the spirit. O'Leary having to work so hard in there in defence of his WBC International Super Lightweight title. Well, Marty Rossian doesn't want me doing that too many times. He's whipping downstairs with, with that right hand, but almost got caught again with that left up. You see, there's that shot again, the way he goes downstairs with it. That was a really solid one, the follow up that just might have stiffened the legs briefly of O'Leary. Nothing serious, but he certainly respects Marty Rossian's power. Yeah. Yeah, he's a solid opponent, isn't he, Marty Rossian? Good round for him. Another good one. That's the way that Carl Frampton's seeing it now. Won. He gave Marty Rossian three in a row, three, four, and five, but six, seven, and eight have all gone to Pierce O'Leary, so he's got him up by three. 
at this stage with a couple of rounds to go. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I would, I'd go along with that. I've got him a couple of rounds up. Might be one more. Um, I think he's ahead, but I don't think there's a lot in this contest, to be quite honest. But I think only he is ahead. Only box six weeks ago, Marty Rossian stopped Tony Rashid and eight to defend his IBO International Super Lightweight title. Six months since we saw Pierce O'Leary last in action. And it's the first time since his amateur days that Marty Rossian's boxing outside Belgium. Seven years older than the man he's up against tonight. Three more professional fights. And two rounds by Carl Frampton and Richie Woodall's scorecards for Marty Rossian to turn this one around. Leary in the black trunks with the Irish tricolor down either side, the mainly white now spattered with blood for uh, Havana's Marty Rossian. Well timed, you see, there he goes, he just made another mistake there, he got away with it again, Marty Rossian, downstairs with the right hand, but it doesn't really hit the target, and he's leaning forward, and that's when he can get caught with the left hook. You know, he, he's, he's punches, he's... The arm is straight, straightened out to go to the body, and as he leans forward, that's when he could walk onto that left hook. A couple of times in this round, the right hand's been good, it's been sharp like that one there. But when he leads off with it, and if he misses, that's giving O'Leary a chance to land that, that uh, more dangerous left hook. I think it's a credit to both of them, Richie. Into the ninth round, a fight that's never really slackened off, that both of them are still punching as often and as hard as they both are. I mean, they're both in terrific condition. Yes, indeed. And they're both going about it, you know, behind their boxing, behind their jabs. To set up the bigger shots. So, yeah, it's, it's a good contest indeed, well matched. Halfway through the ninth, Marty Rossian having a bit of success. Hard as nails, though, isn't he, O'Leary? Yes, well, they, I think they both are, Fletch, you know, they're, they're well matched in skills and... Uh, Toughness here. Oh, there's the left hook. Good shot again. Yeah, that's the shot. That's the one he's looking for. That's the one that had Marty Rossian down in the first. He took it really well in credit to him. I tell you what, he might be tight on the weight, Marty Rossian, but he's fit. He's a fit kid because he's taken some, taken some big shots in this contest and he's recovered each time. So he's a tough cookie indeed. It's been a good round, though, this one for Pierce O'Leary. One more to go after this. Great shot, O'Leary, left hook, and down he goes. And the Irishman just nonchalantly walks to the neutral corner. And Marty Rossian has a little nod of the referee, and he's counted out. It's a brilliant left hook. It's the perfect finish from Pierce O'Leary, who stops another opponent defends his WBC International Super Lightweight title in explosive style. What a cracking shot that was. We spoke about it all night, about the left hook being the danger punch, and he just manoeuvred himself into a position there. It was perfect, wasn't he? Where he got into mid-range and threw that left hook. Sweet punch. Martin Rossian has been taking them all night. We just said how tough he was but it was one too many. That was a perfect shot and a good performance against a real decent, hard opponent. That wasn't an easy fight flex. That was a difficult contest indeed. He had to work for that victory, but what an explosive and perfect finish for Pierce O'Leary. Absolutely perfect left hook. The kind of punch we saw in the first round that had Marty Rossian down, and for all of his bravery and resilience and skill in there, there was nothing he could do once that one landed towards the end of the penultimate round and uh, Pierce O'Leary took it all in his stride didn't he just strolled to the neutral corner waited for Victor Lachlan to count him out and then cue the celebrations yeah it was superb wasn't it and uh, Marty Rossian certainly played his part in this contest kept it long well with the jab and good right hands here and there but we always spoke about this left hook of Pierce O'Leary short and mid-range that's his strength he lands some big good shots over the top with the right hand, but the left hook all night seemed to be the danger shot. And he just got himself into a position there where he's landed the perfect punch. Sweet, the power in that shot was terrific. But, uh, yeah, it was well executed, great technique. And Marty Rossian, he just couldn't recover from that. And let's face it, he's been taking big shots all night, and he has recovered well, but that was a perfect shot.
Well, he's finished the fight in style, and it is all about the style tonight because straight away he's put the Peaky Blinders flat cap on again. Let's get confirmation of that explosive stoppage for Pierce O'Leary from MC Thomas Triver. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. Two minutes, 39 seconds of round number nine. Our referee in charge, Victor Lachlan, reaches the count of 10. Therefore, your winner by way of knockout, still undefeated and still WBC international super lightweight champion, Pierce Big Bang O'Leary. And it was the big bang from the left hook that did the job tonight. I've just seen the judges' scorecards. He was up by one point on two of the cards and up by three points on the other. But it's another win for Pierce O'Leary. 14 and counting for Dublin's big bang. He's entertaining, he's exciting. And when he lands a shot like that, Becky, he's lethal. Well, Steve, Carl, it looked like it might end early, but nine rounds under his belt there. How important was that to get those good rounds in? I, I think it's in a real, really important fight for him. You need tough fights like that coming through, and I think that it'll stand him in good stead going forward. There's a lot of improvements he has to make. I think he, he forgot about his job. We talked about that halfway through the fight, but Pierce has similar sort of attributes to me in, in the sense that he's short, and he has short arms. He doesn't have big levers, so the distance control is really important. And it needs to be slightly better, I think. But this is a, a learning fight for him. And I think he'll take a lot from it and improve going forward. And the finish is brilliant. The finish is perfect. The finish is lovely. But Carl's right. He was getting picked off by those right hands all night long. Couldn't Marty avoid that long right hand Yeah, Mike yeah. couldn't avoid it. I mean, he was just, you know, just kept coming. And he was measuring it right, Marty Rossian. And Pierce was trying all sorts of things. That was a tight fight. You saw two of the scores there would have had it even. It was only the knockdown from the first round that put him a point in yeah. front going into the, going into what was the last two rounds. That was a hard fight. Was it tougher than what you thought it was going to be? Oh, it was a million miles tough. I'd, listen, I'd like to say I predicted a ninth round knockout. I thought, I thought Pierce would get to him or win on points, but that was a harder fight than me, me saying Pierce would win on points. I don't claim what I don't claim. I don't <laughs> tell fibs. <laughs> Sparring with Josh Taylor, though, is this a good thing or a bad thing? So close to a fight. It's got to be good. I mean, you're, you're, you're He's training, one. You're, you're training <laughs> one of the, be the, you know, the best light welterweight on the planet. I mean, it, it can't be anything but good. And me knowing Josh as well, not to say that he's a liberty taker or anything like that, but he'll be letting Pierce O'Leary know who's the boss in there. So I think it's it's, it's definitely very good sparring for him. All right, well, I wonder if J.D. Dyer is letting Pierce O'Leary know who the boss is after that fight. He's down there ringside. Let's hear from him now. I mean, yeah, he started off the action perfectly this weekend, and Pierce, it's the perfect way to start off. They call you the Big Bang for a reason, and it was a conclusive finish in there, but probably a learning fight for you as well. You learned a lot in there. He was a durable opponent as well. Just tell me your takeaway now you've got the win. Yeah, it was a very tough fight. He was, um, to be honest with you, I found it hard to get my own rhythm going, you know. Um, I had a long, long, long camp. I've been in camp for the last 30, 16, 16 weeks, so it's been tough on the body, but we, we got the rhythm done, and... Uh, Joe just kept listening to Joe and Deck in the corner and they just said, say relax and come, don't worry about it, stick to the game plan, what we walked on the gym over the weeks. And then that was what he was just seeing in the night round where he done. You speak about Joe and Declan and the conversations they were having in there. Did you find it hard to adapt in there in terms of just under the bright lights and because of the looks he was giving you? No, absolutely not, no. It's, it's natural. This is what I do for a living. It's second nature to me. Whatever he says, I have to do. And I want to ask you now, because you know you see the WBC International Championship sitting on your, on your shoulder there, but the big domestic fights you're always involved in, always in the conversation for, but I know you've spoken about those world titles you want as well. What does Pierce want next? Yeah, I want to keep on pushing. These are, th these are the two of the lads here that's going to walk in my career. So they'll have a chat and see what's best next for me, but we want them big titles by the end of the year without a deal. The hat is very on brand for Birmingham. Peaky Blinders and my boy Fletch just turned around and said, but congratulations and a great start to Paddy's weekend as well for you, man. <laughs> All right, that win moves in 14 and over, Pierce O'Leary. Right, a meeting between two...